He was a genius writer, but occasionally suffered from writer's block. To handle it, he would ask that his clothes be locked away and he be left naked in a room to write. His clothes were returned only if he finished his writing for the day. Once, when negotiating the sale of his book with his publisher, he made it clear that he wanted to be paid more than any other person who had ever written a book. The reason is that he was so sure of his value as a writer. Rumor has it that he ended up getting one of the biggest paychecks for a work of literature in history. See how important it is to be confident in yourself. Welcome to Personality Matters, I am Arthur Kemps and today we will be talking about Victor Hugo. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Victor Hugo was born in 1802. When he was a child, he moved a lot because his father, General Joseph Leopold Hugo, served in the military. General Hugo, despite his humble beginnings, achieved success in Napoleon's army through bravery and hard work. In 1816, Hugo's family relocated to Paris, where he immersed himself in the city's intellectual and cultural environment. His breakthrough happened in 1822, when his first collection of poems earned him an annual pension of 1,000 francs from Louis XVIII. By 1824, Hugo became part of the Romantic movement, whose goal was to challenge the dominance of classical literature. His historical play Hernani achieved remarkable success among the theater audience and in a way revolutionized traditional theater. This victory not only brought him fame but also considerable wealth. In 1831, Victor Hugo released one of his most famous books, Notre Dame de Paris, commonly known as the Hunchback of Notre Dame. It solidified his position as the leading writer in France. The story is set in the past during the medieval times. It strongly criticizes a society that mistreats and isolates a hunchback named Quasimodo. This book became a huge success and marked a turning point in Hugo's career, leading him to write more about political issues. In his personal life, Victor Hugo also had significant changes. Even though he was married, he started a romance with a young actress named Juliette Druyet in 1833, who eventually became his mistress and faithful companion for the next 50 years. In 1841, Victor Hugo's literary work was recognized by his election to the French Academy. Four years later, he was nominated to the Chamber of Peers. Eventually, he reduced his publishing activity, partly due to societal and political obligations. But also, he had to deal with the devastating personal loss, because his daughter and her husband tragically drowned during their honeymoon. In his earlier years, Victor Hugo supported the monarchy, but gradually his political beliefs started changing. He became increasingly critical of the monarchy and its actions. These shifts were noticeable in his writing and his involvement in political debates. By the way, his famous work Les Miserables reflected his increasing support for republican and social justice principles. Back then, French society rapidly changed and faced numerous social issues, so many writers believed that creating beautiful art alone was no longer sufficient. They felt a moral duty to use their talents to assist the disadvantaged and oppressed. This shift in mindset marked the conclusion of the Romantic era in French literature and the commencement of realism. During the political turmoil in 1848, Hugo initially supported the order and even welcomed Napoleon III. The same year, during the revolution and the establishment of the Second Republic, Victor Hugo became a deputy in the Constitutional Assembly. However, three years later, Hugo opposed Napoleon III when the latter staged a coup d'etat to dissolve the Republic and reinstate the Empire. So Hugo bravely attempted to rally the Parisian workers against the new emperor. His efforts failed and he had to leave Paris for Brussels disguised as a common laborer. While in exile, he openly criticized Napoleon III and produced a substantial body of work against the regime. His writings during this period, which included poems and essays, clearly showed his dedication to the principles of democracy and human rights. Hugo's return to France in 1870 coincided with the fall of Napoleon's regime. He was welcomed as a national hero and continued to be an advocate for republicanism and social justice. He supported the Paris Commune and argued for universal suffrage. While he continued to uphold his long-standing beliefs, he no longer had the same energy. The challenges he faced in recent years had taken a toll on him and aged him. Despite growing more distant from the world around him, he became a national hero and the living embodiment of republicanism in France. Victor Hugo is one of the most significant figures in French literature. His novels, including Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, have become classics, influencing countless authors and shaping the literary landscape. Thank you for watching Personality Matters. We talk about people who made the world. Until next time, I am Arthur Kemps.